Hello everybody, this is Moses from Wilona's Cave. Uh, I'm gonna do another one of these fate, mythic fate stories. Um, because I've, this, the video previous to this one, I'll link it up right now in this video if you wanna watch that, of a mundane story that, you know, I, I, proving that you could do anything you want with mythic and solo RPGing. Uh, I've gotten the most feedback, the most shares, the most questions, the most praise, or et cetera, the most thank you, the most everything positive with that previous video of just using a story, making up a story with a fate chart. You know, no damage rolls, no nothing, no, no real RPG rules other than making a story um, with the fate charts and the randomness and event focus table. Uh, so I'm going to continue that with a, something I've always wanted to do, and I may do it with a series on the channel. I don't know. I have too many series going on right now, so I have to wait for one of them to end to continue a new one. Uh, I always want to do a prehistoric setting to where you basically cavemen um, and mammoths and saber-toothed tigers and things like that. Um, and... Well, I don't know if cavemen would be prehistoric, but really, really, really long time ago. You know, you know what I'm saying? Just not dinosaurs, but cavemen. Uh, I've always wanted to do a setting like that. So I'm thinking with this premise of this story, which we're going to really start really soon here. I'll explain what these charts are, though, really quick for anybody just watching. Um, I'm going to have it to where a father wakes up, most likely in a cave, wakes up, takes his young son with him to hunt. For the family left back in the cave we're gonna see with the dice rolls what happens so i hope nothing really bad happens because i don't want this to turn into a sad story but you never know with the dice roll and with all these things so let's begin with this this is a fate chart by the way this is gonna be very quick this is a fate chart where you can roll and you're gonna see how it works when i start playing where you can roll to figure out you input you start the story of any series with a chaos rank of five you input this idea of, uh, is something in front of you, is that possible or impossible, excuse me, or very likely, it should be likely, let's say, it's very likely. Okay, so you need to roll uh, 85 or below is a yes. Under, is that a 16? Under a 16 is extreme yes. And 85 to 97 is a no, and 97 to 100 is an extreme no. So that's how this works, but you'll see with the, with the story. Then you have the event focus table, which uh, happens if you are rolling a double. So if we're a chaos rank 5, I have to roll a 55, 44, 33, 22, or an 11. Okay, I'm not going off of these charts. We're only going to do on chaos rank 5, right in the middle. But if I roll doubles 5 or under in the 10th, you know, 10 places, 55, 44, then you do whatever that was likely or unlikely whatever you rolled and then you go to the event focus table which will tell you further and also we have the randomness as well so this one we're going to use to create ideas or if i'm stuck or if i just want to make a conflict that i can't think of right away or if i i don't want to think of and i want to be surprised we go with this table here these two um so we'll start that way then so right now or we might start that way. So right now what we're going to do, we got to roll up a d10. I roll on the second roll, not the first one. So this is in count. Uh, I'm going to roll, if it's a 5 or below, the scene has been modified. So let's see. And for the sake of it, I'm going to directly go to... Uh, event If it's modified, even or odd, it doesn't matter right now to me. I'm going to go straight to the event focus table, which I think you're supposed to do only if it's an even, I think, because it's an interrupt. And an odd is just a, um, uh, I forgot the name of it, some, some type of modification. I forgot which one. But regardless, I'm going to always go to this event focus. So if it's five or under, it's event focus. Five. Okay, so you heard my premise. The dad... The father wakes up his son to go to hunt. He leaves the cave. But something changed with that story. That story still happened, everyone. The story still happened. But something changed. Let's find out what changed. So this is a D100 here. So we got to get this out of here. Not this roll, but the second roll. All right, here we go. 
85, 85. So right over here, 84 to 92, MPC negative. Okay, so there's no MPCs right now in a way that we've met. But I did say family, didn't I? I said family. Just great. I just got up. <laughs> the caveman. Uh, what, should we give him a name? Let's call him Mark. Mark. <laughs> Mark. No, you know what? Forget it. Fred. Fred Flintstone. Fred. Fred just got up. And there's already a problem. And it could be the sun, I guess. Let's say, we'll find out, we'll find out. So what we're gonna do now, since it's modified and it's MPC negative, we go to event meaning action, and then we go to event meaning subject. So let's roll for the action right now. It's a D100 for both. 26. Procrastinate. Well, maybe my son's not getting up fast enough, but we'll see what the subject is. 34, expectations. Okay, that makes sense. My son, okay. So Fred wakes up his son and tells his son to be quiet in their language or whatever they use. But he signifies with hand signals, like putting his finger in his mouth. You know, he invented that. He invented the shush, the shush with the finger, the, 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 the shush finger. <laughs> and he tells his son to be quiet, basically. The son, you know, he grabs his son's arm and heads out outside the cave, but the son pulls back. And he says, he looks at him, you know, and signifies what's wrong, what's happening. And the son says that we don't uh, have our, uh, I don't have my weapon, a club. Let's say he has a club, okay? And the father has a sharp dagger made of uh, obsidian or some type of rock. Um, but the son's club is missing. <laughs> see how the story you see what solo RPG can do already already we're going into finding a club and who knows what's going to happen after okay so we can't find the club so what we do now remember you if you're going to play solo RPG me playing okay and this fake chart know certain things but the caveman and his son does not. That's where the surprise comes in. Okay? Because I'm going to roll right now. We're going to know, but they're not going to know. Okay? So we're going to roll. First roll. First fake chart. The question is, is the club... Um, is the club near them? Is the club near them? Something you would ask a DM or a GM in a group play. Is the club near them? Am I going to even waste my time? Um, is the club near them? Let's see. It's kind of a vague question. I could rephrase it a little bit better, but regardless. So, Chaos Rank 5. I'm going to say... You know what? We're going to start with our first fate roll at 50. 50-50. 50, 50. So, 50 or below, it's a yes. The club is near them. Ele 11. Almost an extreme yes. So with my house rules of, of this happened on the last episode too of this of the storytelling, when it's so close to a yes or so close to a no or an extreme yes or an extreme no, one away really, it's still a yes, but it's so close to an extreme yes, it's it's not an extreme yes, but I'm gonna tweak the yes to be almost an extreme yes. So if it's be an extreme yes would have been, I would have made it funny in a way of like, you know, the father hitting him on the side saying, you slept at, you used it as a pillow. You know, he used his club as a pillow. He was sleeping, he put his head on it. That would have been extreme yes. A yes, but so close to extreme yes, would be his sister is using it as a pillow. His sister's using his club as a pillow. And his sister's very young, let's say two years old. Two-year-old has a pillow under her head for a club, the weapon. It has bits of mammoth hair and everything and blood and stuff on it. And still the baby sleeping or the toddler is putting the head, their head on the, uh, as a pillow. So now, so now the son looks at it 
points and looks slowly at his father and his father looks down at his son and slowly looks up where he's pointing and his mouth drops. And in his mind, he's saying, how am I going to do this now? How am I going to get this club out of my daughter? Because his daughter's loud. The daughter will wake up everybody in the, in the family. And then everybody's going to be hungry and he hasn't come back with food yet. So he doesn't want the daughter to wake up. Do we leave without the club? Can we just find another club out there? I think that the father knows that it's going to be a problem trying to do anything with that club. So the, I'm, without rolling, I'm going to say the father gets a rock. He, he bends down. He gets a rock about the size of his palm. He puts it, he grabs his son's hands, puts it in his hands and just pulls on him and says, there's your, basically saying, there's your new weapon. Let's go. <laughs> so they got, a, they got a pretty good sized rock that he, you know, he can easily carry. The young boy can easily carry. And the father has the little, you know, obsidian or whatever, a rock arrow, you know, kind of like a, a shank made of rock stone. Um, okay, and they're off. Here we go. So they're, they, they walk out of the cave. It's early morning. It's still, the sun hasn't risen yet. It's a cool breeze, a lot of wind. Where the cave is, there's a lot of cool breezes coming down the mountain ridge, the mountain valley, excuse me. And there's just cool breeze coming in and the smell of flowers, the smell of uh, grass, the grassland, the, the, the valley, the, and they could also smell, I mean, they're hunting, they're hunting, they, all, they also can smell fresh, or, you know what, fate chart, question, um, there is the smell of fresh dung, fresh manure, fresh feces of an animal, Okay, remember they're hunting. You got to do what you got to do. If there if there's fresh feces somewhere, there's a fresh animal somewhere close by. Uh, so we're gonna roll on the chaos rank five. Do they smell the fresh? <laughs> this story is taking a turn. Do they smell the fresh feces, the fresh pile of manure? Um, do they smell it? So chaos rank five. You know, I'm going to say somewhat likely. 65 or below. They smell. <laughs> they smell it. 23, 65. Okay, so it's not extreme yes. They smell it. Okay, so an extreme yes, for anyone that's like, well, how do I do it? This is really cool, Moses. Let's say you're doing that. I hope you're saying that. But this is really cool, Moses. But okay, so what do I do? What's an extreme yes and what's a yes? An extreme yes would have been they smell it and they know exactly where the scent's coming from because they could tell from the wind where it carried it. Okay, a yes would be they could smell it, but they don't know what direction it came from because there's a lot of, lot of wind, a lot of gusts going around. They don't know which direction, but they know that there's fresh um, feces, fresh manure, and they know that means fresh meat somewhere close by. So they don't know where to go yet. Okay, so without rolling, um... Let's roll on for their next step because they don't know what direction the, the fresh smell is coming from. Their next step, let's go, let's roll for an action and a subject here. Okay, action 15. Gratify. That's a good sign right now. Six. Wow, that really took a play right there. 66. Okay, now this doesn't count, by the way, so 66. So gratify, I don't want to forget. 66 is a double. One, it's over our chaos rank, so it doesn't count at all. But doubles is only if you roll on the fate chart, not if you roll on these charts. The fate chart doubles of your chaos rank or lower creates an, a random event. Okay, so what did I say? Oh boy, gratify, yes. Gratify and 66... Fears. That's a real contradiction. Gratify fear. Okay. I think I know how to do it. Tough love. 
The father's like, I'm here to teach you, son, to hunt. So he's gratified. He's, he's gracious. I don't know what other words to say for gratify. Uh, he's happy that there's the smell, and you don't know where it is. So now is the time, 66, what was it again? Jesus, mercy, fears. My son, his son, excuse me, my son. His son, he knows his son is still scared of hunting. So he tells his son, he's, grat he's gracious that this happened because it's a prime example. He, the father knows, I'm not going to roll for it. The father knows what type of smell this is. He knows that it's a small animal. It's not a big one, like a mammoth or saber tooth or whatever else there is back then. So he knows it's a small animal, so it can't be too, you know, too dangerous. So he tells the son, I want you, you know, he grabs the son, hits his chest. I don't know what they do back then. Come on, everybody. Hits his chest and points out towards the smell, wh wherever that smell could be. He's not too sure, but he knows it's up the mountain somewhere. He just doesn't know uh, dead reckoning, which way to go. Um, so you just have to pick one way and follow, the, follow your nose. <laughs> um, so anyways, the son's scared and shakes and... and and the son walks a little bit away from his father, climbing up the, the little hillside next to his cave, next to their cave opening, and looks back at his father and, and moves his arm like, you gonna come, dad? And the dad goes, uh-uh. <laughs> and the son, the son does a big, you know, like a gulp, big swallow, like he's scared, turns back around, looks up the hill, and walks off by himself. Let's say the son's about 10 years old, 8 years old. Remember, he has a little boulder in his hand, a little rock, even though there's rocks everywhere. He could just drop that and get one later. So he slowly climbs up the hill and climbs and climbs, and he gets to a point on a ridge where he looks back down at his father, because at this point, when he keeps walking on, he won't see his father anymore. And uh, the scent is getting stronger. The scent's getting stronger. Um, a little bit too strong, let's say. A little bit too strong. Uh, but he looks back down at his father and he, he shrugs his shoulder and his arm again, saying, you know, like, come on, you gonna come, Dad? And the dad goes, he thinks about it, he thinks about it. Fate chart. Does his, does his dad go? Okay, that's rank five. Tough love. Unlikely. <laughs> Not very unlikely. Uh, unlikely. Okay, unlikely that he's, he's going to follow at this point. He might follow later, but unlikely. So 35 or below is a yes. Is he going to follow? 35 or below is a yes. <laughs> Man, this is some tough love. <laughs> you know what? Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is an extreme no. Okay. <laughs> the dad, the dad looks up at the son. And, and then does some hand gestures that they understand to communicate, like, you know, like puts his hand o over his head, like sh shaping an animal, you know, like he's, he's, he's making a round circle like it's an animal or whatever, or, or puts, makes horn signs on top of his head saying, you get the animal, I'm going to go back, to, <laughs> I'm going to go back to bed. <laughs> so the dad, extreme no, the dad walks back in the cave and goes, and <laughs> goes back to, or tries to go back to sleep. We'll figure out what happens with him later. And the son just is on the, on the ridge looking down going, Are you serious, Dad? Are you serious? Okay. Let, uh, also, we're going to keep this real. Alexa, set timer 15 minutes. We got to make this real because I can get carried away and I could talk for about two hours on this. We got to shorten it up because there's editing maybe involved. Okay. So the dad goes back to sleep. The son... Uh, <laughs> look, looks back, does another big gulp of being scared and shakes a little bit and just shrugs his shoulders and goes, no, in his head, in whatever language, no, I need to be a man, I need to be a provider for, for my family, you know, my family now and my family in the future, I need to learn, so he keeps walking and walking. Uh, up the ridge. Now he no longer can see his father. He can't see the cave opening or anything. He's just walking up the hillside and to the left of him is the valley going down into 
the cave opening of his, of his home. And that valley has a little bit of water running through it, like a little creek, like it's been raining all night. Okay, so a lot of the rocks are wet, slimy a little bit, moss covered, and they're wet. So the sun is trying his best, slowly climbing up, uh, finished climbing the ridge, and now he's climbing up another slope because he's, he's, he's catching the smell. He sees the smell is not in the area he's in. The, the wind now is picking up the smell of, the, of the, uh, the feces, the manure, and he can smell it's even higher. It's way up there. But now, in this location, the rocks are, re it's really rocky, and he's afraid he's gonna slip. Um, so he's gonna move even slower. There, remember, the left side of him is a little stream, okay? So what he decides to do, he decides to do is stay away from the rocks and go closer to the stream because there's not as many rocks there. It's open, there's more of a stream. He doesn't want to climb the rocks because he's afraid he's gonna slip very easily. He'd rather walk through the stream. And maybe this will help cover, maybe his father taught him this as well. His father taught him to go into the water so your scent, your trail will be covered. Your scent of your footprint won't be there anymore because the water will carry it on. So he's climbing up the stream, which is also slippery, but not as slippery as his big jagged rocks that he might have to climb with his bare hands. So he climbs up the stream. Okay, as he's going up the stream, he's halfway up to the hill, the hilltop now, the top of the, the hill. There's nothing more after this other than a huge valley behind them with a meadow way in the distance, a flat meadow. Okay, is there an issue that comes up walking up the stream. He's halfway. I would have, I would think he would have already looked and looked around to see if the animal or something was there or looked in the sky or anything. It's pretty dark still. Uh, but the sun's starting to slowly come up now, so you can see a little bit. Um, I would say he's pretty keen. It's very quiet. He can hear everything. I would say it's somewhat uh, unlikely, it's very unlikely, it's very unlikely that something happens, bad happens. So 25 or less, something bad happens. the most extreme yes you can get <laughs> on, the, on the worst question to ask. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Let me make sure. Is that a one? <laughs> All right, okay. Okay. All right, I'm going to go... <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to do full blown because it's such an extreme yes you're supposed to do doubles. Okay, you can do whatever you want. This is a solo RPG. Do whatever you want. But I'm going to do this. This is not what you're supposed to do. Okay? When you roll doubles like I've said before, like three or four times already, you roll doubles under your chaos rank, you have to go to the event focus table. Because of this extreme the highest extreme yes on the worst question possible, is there some trouble that happens halfway up this hill? I'm going to roll on the event focus table for this to give me an idea. Here we go. D100. 45. Move towards a thread. Okay, his thread is um, um, finding, what, uh, finding an animal to kill. That's his thread. Okay? So move towards a thread. Now we go to the action and subject. Action. Three. Neglect. Not really good. 49. Failure. Oh, this is all bad. 
So moving towards the, move towards the thread, neglect failure. What did he fail on? Let me write it down. Hold on. Move towards thread. Move towards thread. Because I'm going to roll again. Move towards thread. Neglect failure. Neglect failure. Because I'm going to forget these things. Okay, move. <laughs> God. Let's roll again. So I'm going to make this into a sentence now with all these words. Action. 15. Gratify. Weird. 88. Illusions. Gratify. Illusions. I think I know what happened. I know what happened. I know what happened. The sun. The, not the sun. Not the sun coming up. The sunrise. The son of the caveman. Fred... And uh, we'll call him, we'll call him Bam Bam. Okay, Bam Bam. Bam Bam. <laughs> Why don't I just call him Bam? But anyways, Bam Bam climbs up the, the stream. A certain area of the stream had a lot of moss and a lot of slime growing. He didn't notice. His left foot, when it was placed down on that rock, on that little pretty good sized rock, slipped and fell, he fell. So he neglected looking down, he neglected safety, etc. and he failed, neglect failure. He failed, he fell. He fell to the point, because remember, it's an extreme yes, did he get into trouble? He fell and knocked himself unconscious, okay? Not for a very long time, not long enough I'm not going to roll on this. Not long enough for the father to say, where's my son? Where's my breakfast? You know, he's been gone for a while. Not long enough for that. He fell and um, he woke up 10 minutes later, let's say five minutes later, 10 minutes later, very short, okay? But he woke up, he woke up still dazed, gratify illusions that he was gracious that he was still alive. He notices that he's still breathing, he's slapping his face, he's pinching himself, etc. Oh, I'm still alive, I thought I died. Um, but he's still dazed and he starts having illusions. He starts seeing things because he, he, he hit his head so hard, he hit his head so hard that he starts seeing stars, he starts seeing illusions. And the illusion he sees, the illusion he sees Okay, we're going to change this up now. I was about to say the illusion he sees is some type of animal that's not really there. And he follows the animal, but he gets lost. He, he, the illusion he sees is not that he saw something. The illusion is he forgot where he was. He, he got, uh, uh, what is it, amnesia, let's say. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to do this on the spur of the moment. So that's the word I'm going to pick. He forgot everything. Let's say he forgot even who he was. He forgot he had a father. He forgot his house or his cave is just right behind him, you know, quarter mile down, quarter mile away. He forgot everything. And he just starts, bam, bam, <laughs> just starts walking in one direction. He's, he's just walking in one direction, let's say due north. He's walking way far away from his, his cave. He's gone. It's over. It's been hours. It's been hours. Okay, cut, go to the father. Father go, gets up, you know, where's breakfast? And his wife, Wilma, <laughs> looks at him and goes, Fred, why don't you just, now they're talking, I guess. Fred, why don't you just uh, go outside and find Bam Bam and see where he's been? So Fred goes outside, follows up the mountain. All oh, this is going to make it quick. And gets to the spot where he thought he would have been, Okay. Uh, Fred is so experienced that he even found the scat. He even found the manure pile, the fresh, well, not so fresh anymore. The sun's been baking it for a little bit. Uh, so it's not so fresh, but he found the manure pile of the animal and it would have been a small critter. I don't know what, whatever it is, small. Let's say a prehistoric fox or whatever. Small animal that wouldn't have really killed anybody, any of them. 
Um, and then looked at the pile and looked around and yelled out, I guess they could at least say their names, Bam Bam, Bam Bam. He doesn't hear nothing in back. It doesn't even matter if he said anything because Bam Bam doesn't even know his name anymore. Um, so the father heads out a little farther and does the father notice any traces of Bam Bam in the direction he went, which is due north? Um, does he notice any direction? Does he notice? Does he notice? Does he notice? I think that Fred is really smart, really experienced. I think it is likely. Chaos rank 575 or below. He notices at least the direction that Bam Bam went. 68, hold on here. Five, likely. Okay, yes. It's a yes. Okay, so, so Fred looks. It's not extreme yes. So Fred looks down close to the manure pile, a little bit away from it. I, I think this, the, the sun didn't even get close to the manure pile. Um, and sees blood. Ooh, isn't that something? Blood. There's a trail of it going directly due north. And with that, we're going to go to another episode. Because I got other things to do. You know, I am a, I am a father and I have my own Bam Bam. <laughs> and my other little, little, little cave daughter that I have to take care of right now. Uh, let me know. Isn't that kind of weird? Isn't that kind of crazy and weird how a story can go with solo RPGing? I wish more people, the community, will keep doing more of this. We need more people solo. This stuff is awesome. It's not boring. Do you see how much I laughed? My lungs and throat hurt from laughing so hard. I haven't laughed like that in a long time. Um, chaos rank. Do we change it like I do in regular games? Yeah, we change it. It's going to go to chaos rank six. Okay, let me write down. Chaos rank six. So that means you're more often going to get a yes answer. So you can see right here. So let's say chaos rank five, 50, 50 is 50 or below. 50 50. If I go to chaos rank six and I say it's 50 50, it's a 65 or below for a yes. 75 or below for a yes. 85, 95. And it goes like this. So you can see all the way it's 145 or below, which is nine at. It has to be is going to be a hundred percent yes you know that's i don't i'm not too sure why they go so high but regardless it's a, that's how it works the lower you go the more often it's going to be a no the higher you go it's going to be a yes so you have to frame your questions correctly um and you have to be true to uh this right here these these little very likely unlikely so if you go you know it's impossible it better be impossible you know, or the story gets kind of a uh, story goes off on a tangent, which really doesn't make any sense. Okay, there, everybody. Uh, threads. I know I'm not gonna do this like a regular thing. There's no NPC, no nothing like that. Maybe I'll do something like that later on. Uh, but right now, it's just the chaos rank changes. That's it. Nothing else. No threads. No NPC stuff. Okay, so Fred is on the lookout for his son Bam Bam, with Wilma waiting to cook. And found the blood, and there's Alexa. If you can hear the alarm, good timing, I guess. Happy gaming, everybody. And let's see if we can find that blood trail. Hopefully it gets to our son, or his son, excuse me. Bye. <laughs>